Have you ever wondered what happens when your system encounters the unexpected? What if you could test and prepare for those moments of chaos before they happen? Chaos engineering is about proactively stress testing your system to find weaknesses before they become real problems. Imagine intentionally breaking parts of your system to see how well it can handle failure. That's the essence of chaos engineering. Proactively simulating disruptions like server failures, network outages, or spikes in traffic to identify vulnerabilities before they cause downtime or affect your users. The goal? Build more resilient and reliable systems by understanding how your infrastructure behaves under pressure. Instead of waiting for things to go wrong in production, chaos engineering lets you uncover these issues in a controlled environment, allowing you to fix them before they impact your users. But here's the kicker. It's not just about randomly causing chaos. Chaos engineering follows a structured, scientific approach. First, you create hypotheses about how the system should react to inevitable failures. Then, you run controlled experiments to test these hypotheses, starting with smaller, manageable failures and gradually increasing the severity. Along the way, you gather data on the system's behavior and make improvements based on what you learn. Popular tools like Netflix's Chaos Monkey, which randomly shuts down server instances, and Litmus Chaos, an open source chaos engineering platform for injecting failures, makes chaos engineering a lot easier. These tools help engineers inject failures safely, ensuring the experiments don't create more harm than good. How does chaos engineering work? So, how does it work in practice? First, you identify the part of your system you want to test. Then, you create hypotheses about how the system will behave when things go wrong. For example, if this server fails, our load balancer should reroute traffic without downtime. Next, you design your experiment. This can involve shutting down a server, introducing network latency, or simulating a spike in user traffic. The key is to start small and control the blast radius of impact. You're not trying to cause chaos, you're testing specific failure scenarios to see how your system reacts. During the experiment, you closely monitor the system's behavior. Are response times getting worse? Is resource usage spiking? Are error rates climbing? By gathering this data, you can pinpoint where the system is struggling. Once the experiment is over, you analyze the results. Did the system behave as expected? If not, where did it fall short? From there, you can make improvements whether it's adding more redundancy, refining failover mechanisms, or optimizing resource allocation for your infrastructure. What's cool about chaos engineering is that it's an iterative process. You don't just run one experiment and call it a day. It becomes part of your ongoing development and operations workflow. By regularly running chaos experiments, you get better and better at building systems that can handle failure. Types of chaos experiments. Chaos experiments come in many forms, depending on what you're trying to test. Here are some common examples. Server failure, simulating the shutdown of one or more servers to see how well the system handles the loss of resources. Does it fail over to other servers smoothly or does it crash? Network outages, introducing network latency or packet loss to observe how the system deals with communication issues. Can the system maintain functionality when the network is degraded? High traffic loads, Simulating a sudden surge in traffic to test how the system scales under pressure. Does performance degrade or does it scale smoothly? Database failures. Simulating database crashes or slow queries to see how well the system recovers. Is there a backup in place or does everything grind to a halt? Third-party service disruptions. Temporarily disabling an external service the system depends on to test how gracefully it handles the interruption. The key to chaos experiments is to plan them carefully. You want them to be safe and controlled, meaning they shouldn't put the system or your users at serious risk. Monitoring tools help track what's happening during these experiments. And if things start to go wrong, you need to have a rollback plan to restore the system to a stable state. The benefits of chaos engineering. So why go through all this trouble of intentionally breaking your system? The benefits are massive. First, chaos engineering helps you proactively detect issues before they cause downtime or impact customers. By simulating real-world failures, you get a glimpse of how your system behaves under stress, allowing you to address potential problems early on. Chaos engineering also leads to more resilient systems. By regularly injecting failures, you can identify weak points and fix them, 
Whether it's through adding redundancy, improving load balancing, or optimizing resource usage. Another big advantage is improving system performance. By simulating stress scenarios like high traffic, you can uncover performance bottlenecks and make the necessary adjustments to ensure scalability and stability. Plus, Chaos Engineering gives your team and your stakeholders confidence in the system's ability to handle failure. By knowing you've actively tested for issues, there's less fear that an actual failure will bring everything crashing down and your engineers will become more confident working together. Finally, Chaos Engineering promotes a culture of continuous improvement. It encourages teams to regularly test, learn, and improve the system, keeping it resilient and adaptable as conditions change. Challenges of Chaos Engineering. Of course, Chaos Engineering isn't without its challenges. Designing effective Chaos experiments requires a deep understanding of your system's architecture. You need to know where potential failure points are and how to simulate them in a way that doesn't risk severe disruption. As systems grow more complex and interconnected, predicting how failures will cascade through the system becomes tougher. You need to account for these interactions and ensure the experiment stays controlled. It also takes a cultural shift. Chaos engineering requires teams to embrace failure as an opportunity for learning not something to avoid at all costs. It's about moving from a keep it stable mindset to a make it resilient approach. Lastly, implementing chaos engineering can be resource intensive. You'll need the right tools and infrastructure to inject failures, monitor responses, and analyze results. However, the long-term benefits far outweigh the initial investment once the process is in place. How to get started with chaos engineering. Ready to dip your toes into chaos engineering? Here's how to get started. Learn the basics. Get familiar with the principles of chaos engineering and understand its goals. Set objectives. Define what you want to achieve, whether it's improving redundancy, enhancing failover mechanisms, or optimizing resource allocation. Start small. Run your first experiment on a single component or service, simulating network latency or resource exhaustion failures. Design experiments. Carefully plan the scope and intensity of each experiment. Ensure you know what to monitor and what the expected outcome should be. Set safety measures. Always have a rollback plan if things go wrong. Analyze and iterate. After each experiment, analyze the results and make improvements. Consider automating the tests in your CI-CD process. Then design your next experiment. How Harness Can Help Chaos Engineering is a game changer for building resilient, reliable systems. It helps teams uncover hidden vulnerabilities, improve performance, and gain confidence in their infrastructure's ability to withstand real-world failures. But as we've discussed, implementing chaos engineering comes with challenges. Whether it's designing safe experiments, managing complexity in interconnected systems, or fostering a culture that embraces failure as a learning opportunity. That's where Harness Chaos Engineering comes in. Harness simplifies the entire process, offering service discovery and pre-built experiments tailored to your infrastructure, so you don't need deep expertise to get started. Simply let it recommend experiments based on the services it discovered and report on the results. Controlled test configurations to reduce blast radius of impact and safely run experiments without risking severe disruptions. Seamless CI-CD integration to make chaos engineering a natural part of your software build and deployment workflow. Actionable insights and resilience scoring so you can analyze results and track improvements over time. With Harness, chaos engineering becomes approachable, scalable, and impactful. It empowers your team to focus on building better systems rather than manually managing chaos. Take the next step towards resilience. Visit harness.io to learn how the platform can help you embrace chaos engineering with confidence and transform your approach to reliability. If you're ready to get started, try Harness Chaos Engineering today and see how easy it is to build systems that thrive under pressure. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe for more insights on software development and security practices. See you next time.